Hallelujah. We bless the Lord. Greetings um, to you all. So, yeah, basically I am here because some people said, remember you have an online audience. So don't forget about us while you're out in the U.S. So here I am. I bless God. He's been faithful. He's been a good, good God. It is, I know it's like 11 o'clock back in Kenya, but it's like um, uh, 3 a.m. Um, down on this side. It's actually like 4 a.m. now. So we've been in Akesha. We are basically um, calling on the name of the Lord. I am not sure. I'm not seeing anybody online. I hope I am online. <laughs> Believe God that I am online. But, um, oh, there's somebody. Okay. So um, just to, I, I did it to just give you guys an update. And I need to begin by saying God has been amazingly good. He's been so faithful. Hey, Lynette. Oh, I can see Mary as well. God bless you guys. Thanks for logging in. And Maggie, amen, amen. Thanks, guys, for praying. Thanks for pressing in. We have really seen the glory of God, you know, right from the airport into the home. And just God has done a very quick work. Um, we had um, two back-to-back -back Keshas. Um, basically, they're called vigils here, you know. So we had two back-to-back -back Keshas. So um, this last night and the night before. And uh, a lot of it was teaching and really just it was meeting with women intercessors. I love women intercessors. I mean, really, that's where our ministry for me um, really started with women intercessors. So like a Daughters of Elohim here um, in uh, um, Worcester. It's called Worcester. Yeah. Worcester, uh, Massachusetts. And God has really moved. So this last night, um, the Lord led us, the first night, the Lord led us into just teaching um, the intercessors about what intercession is and knowing their position and knowing that they have authority, sharing um, testimonies of what God has been doing in our missions in Kenya and um, amongst us in Kenya. And a lot of it was confirming what they have been doing themselves and what God has been saying to them here themselves. So that was very encouraging to them as well because it was like an affirmation of you are on the right track and this really works and everything. Then last night was, um, we, we really went deep because um, the Lord told us to do a courtroom session um, for Massachusetts. Um, the interesting thing is, you know, I love how God works and his order and you know, uh, Massachusetts was the first state in America, and this is where, you know, a ship called the Mayflower came and landed, and it had um, Christians uh, who were running away from persecution in England. So it's also kind of called New England as well. Um, so it was the first state ever. So the Lord um, led us to, so, so God is a God of order. So when you look at things like that, um, you know, Massachusetts was the first state to approve gay marriages. You then understand that it's not a coincidence because what Satan was doing was just defiling the altar, which is the center of, uh, of America. He understands the, 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 the importance of alpha, you know, um, and forgets that God is the alpha and the omega. So we did a courtroom session for Massachusetts and oh, it took forever, you know, after we were done. I was laughing, I was telling them, oh, there are many courtroom sessions, but oh, you all have a lot of sins, man. I mean, that was hours of courtroom session, you know, we were just laughing about that. It was a really long list of accusations from Satan. and But we bless the Lord that in the end, the Lord did give us execution papers. And we rose up in authority and just started declaring various things that we know that we will see the face of Massachusetts changing. You know, guys, one of the things that's really encouraging me while I'm here is um, on, on the flight. Um, I, I, I saw, I was, I was given the standard newspaper, which by the way, I normally don't read, I normally read nation, but uh, I was given standard and, um, in there I found a message and they were talking about how the rhino had conceived, the white rhino had finally conceived. And it's something that we prayed about at the revival meetings in March. And, um, it really, really amazed me how God moves. And we've seen God do that before. But, you know, it was interesting praying during our revival meetings and finding myself praying for a rhino to conceive. And I I remember trying to stop and thinking, Ay, people might think I'm mad here. There's nothing to pray for. How am I praying for a rhino to get pregnant? How many women have not conceived yet before I go praying for rhinos? But I knew that was spirit-led. But it's very interesting how God did it. And really, I've been using that story to tell these guys here 
that if God cares enough to lead us to pray over a rhino to conceive and a rhino conceives, how much more other things? And that's how God moves. Earlier on, I mean, I was remembering also about the story of the higher sins. I was remembering also about the story of the water into Kana. I mean, we've seen major things. And now the PCA church has risen up and distanced itself from Muma and all those um, cultural rights in central Kenya. And I bless God, you know. It just takes somebody arising and taking authority in the name of Jesus Christ. So we we did a courtroom session and it was, it was, oh, First of all, at some point, it was very, very discouraging. I mean, it felt like the sins of Massachusetts were not ending. Eh? The list of sins was just, oh, it was probably over 100 sins. Definitely over 100 sins because we were, we were on that for like two hours. Eh? You can imagine just the accusation bit was like um, more than an hour anyway. And of course, it feels longer. And then finally, when we finished, I just couldn't see the execution papers. I kept asking God because the, the vision just changed and the execution papers disappeared, even though God has said not guilty. And that's his verdict. But, you know, in the courtroom of heaven, you must get the execution papers. Others, it's not over. So you cannot go and get back your estate. You cannot go back and get your things if you don't have courtroom papers. So I was there begging the Lord and pleading with the Lord. And finally, I blessed the Lord that he did give us the courtroom papers. And then we began to make decrees and we are waiting to see see them manifest and we bless the Lord. Um, but the Lord just moved in such heavy ways. And by the time we were done, which was about 2 a.m., the Lord said, you're now done. Uh, you have finished your work here in Massachusetts and you can move on um, to Delaware. But by the way, um, earlier on was speaking and they, there is a prayer retreat here in uh, Massachusetts. So I will need to come back for just about a week and do a sozo session. So that has opened up um, to do a sozo session in Massachusetts. So if anybody is looking for a sozo session, it would be great to come. But of course, as expected, um, sozo in America um, has turned to be quite demonic and quite a number of funny things have happened to people. And um, it scares people in America when you talk about sozo sessions. And that's a warning that God had given me in Kenya and actually told me to patent that brand. Um, for Sozo to make sure that that never gets disrupted or interfered, is which we, we got to do. And um, unfortunately, it seems like Sozo began well, then it got caught up in funny, funny things. So a number of people also were expressing that concern, you know, they were like, okay, the Sozo sessions for Sozo Church are okay, they're not like the ones, because a number of people who have called, um, people who say that they do Sozo sessions here in the States, and they found, hey, yeah, um, these guys are actually not walking with God. So it's very, very sad. So we will be having a, an amazing prayer retreat. Um, it's a four-day prayer retreat that will take place here in Worcester. Um, I will share the poster shortly. Um, not shortly, really, but yeah, in a day or two, I'll share the poster so that you can invite your friends and you can fly in. By the way, we have a lady who flew in from Maryland. So really, it's just upon people, depending on how, how much of your freedom you want and how much um, you want God to do for you. And flights in, in America are not too expensive, you know. But also, what would you pay for your freedom if God is not charging you anything? Though, of course, you know, um, the people who are organizing the conference will charge because uh, they're charging $175, which is not too bad, uh, because that will go into accommodation and, um, you know, for, for, for the period that we will have the four days, which I think it's pretty reasonable. And we're having children from the age of even 12 coming and everything. So really plan and, and, and show up, book your place, because the place is not very big. So book your place if you are in this area. Tell your family to book their place so that they can come and find their freedom. So we bless God, um, and now we are heading out to Delaware. Um, so it's, it's like I said, it's about 4 a.m. here. Um, so yeah, just getting quick rest and um, need to go and see a, a, a boy who's not well. Oh, by the way, yesterday we went to a hospital, and guys, let me tell you something. <gasps> here, guys are sick, you know, as in like people are sick. As in seriously, after I came from that hospital, actually at some, after some time in that hospital, I, I actually, and you know me, I'm very expressive, so I'm kind of hoping that I wasn't being rude, but I remember looking at everybody, like, oh, so sick. Then I meet the next person, like, oh, so sick, you know? <laughs> and <laughs> I told the guys who took me at some point, I pulled them aside and I said, oh, yeah, here, people are sick. I'm beginning to think in Kenya, we pretend that we are sick. As in, by the way, you look at somebody and you don't know what they have, but man, they look really, really sick. 
Uh, so that was something that we really also had to pray for and pray for hospitals and everything. But man, people have the craziest of diseases, craziest of diseases. Yeah, so we went to see a little boy who had leukemia and we were praying for him, 11 year old. That was really painful. Jay Muturi, do not say I have an accent. Do you know how hard I'm working not to have an accent? Where, where, where? Yani, by the way, let me tell you, you're surrounded by rah, 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 until even you yourself find yourself talking like that. And I was telling God as I'm going online, I'm not going to talk like that. <gasps> yes. My friend calls it talking their language the way they talk their language. But yeah. So anyway, <laughs> Jerry's having a good laugh. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so we went to pray for this still boy. Um, but the interesting thing is when we're coming from, we had just come from having breakfast. By the way, I had, my brunch was a double um, cheese. No, it wasn't a double cheeseburger. I don't know what it's called, but it was like a story building kind of cheeseburger. I mean, the biggest cheeseburger ever. By the way, I'm taking photos of food and everything. So, um, I mean, it was like a really, really stacked burger. It was big. It was huge. It was humongous. Here, by the way, everything is big, big, big. <laughs> Even their logo is big. Everything is big. Americans, everything is big. So anyway, um, we, we had all these my omelets and things are just big, you know. And by the way, we were encouraging ourselves as intercessors. We were saying, hey, actually we eat because now we don't know when we are fasting again. So that's how we were encouraging ourselves. So we really stuffed ourselves. Then after that, we passed by a few places. I was taken to a shoe heaven. <gasps> oh, yes, beautiful shoes and everything. So Oh, no, coming from there, I remember feeling so empty. There's this thing that happens to me. If I've not spent time with the Lord, at least two hours with the Lord, I feel so empty. So when I got into the car, I was like, oh, you guys, I'm feeling so empty. Can we just pray? You know, and we just started to pray. And I thank God for intercessors because nobody's like, you know, like, ah. You know, I mean, okay, if you're watching me and you're international, I mean, yeah. Okay, I don't know what katia is. Like, I don't know. I don't know what katia means. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know if there's an interpretation for Katia. Like you're a party pooper. I think that's it. And then, um, uh, yes, and I'm trying to interpret. It's not working. It's like 4 a.m. here. I haven't slept. So please um, just get, you know, interpretation somewhere from an African who knows Swahili. So um, we got into the vehicle and we're just praying and, and, and calling on the Lord and just filling up, um, you know, ourselves with the presence of God and his glory. And then that's when the Lord told me it's also because of where you're going. And we went to see this little boy, sweetheart, little beautiful boy, 11 years old. He's been in hospital for three and a half months, guys, three and a half months, leukemia. And, you know, my heart just broke. And, you know, we, we just took time to pray for him. And they have this really sweet thing that they do. Aki, by the way, let me tell you, eh? I think one of the things that happens when you come here is how you realize that okay, as Africans, we are gangster. I, mean, I don't even know, like, for example, how our children recover, you know. So, like, <laughs> for example, this little boy had a chart, a nice chart that the teacher brought, and it had, I don't know, pain levels, and I don't know, very painful, too painful, the worst, and it has all these signs. But then it also had a diary of things to come, and it was saying things to look forward to. I'm like, how come we never think of that, you know, like giving our children hope and looking forward to things? But I guess our priorities are just different. Eh? I guess they don't have so many problems like us, so they have time to think about such things. <laughs> For us, we're just like, eat, eat. If you die, what will happen to you? Eat. You better eat, you know. And the little boy said he had eaten only a hot dog, and I shuddered. I was like, that's not food. And everybody was saying, he tried. It's better than nothing. And I'm like... You know, I'm like, oh, I'm so African, by the way. Yeah? And we are actually gang-ho. Seriously. <laughs> I mean, guys, do you remember being sick and that your parent would actually spunk you <laughs> for not getting better? <laughs> Yeah, so these guys have little boards and um, they have a place that says things to look forward to. It talks about graduation and it talks about, I don't know, there's a book, story book that they are doing and they have a book camp and everything. And the child is supposed to, you know, and so when we're telling the baby, you know, you're going to walk out of here, you're going to be fine, you're going to be healed. He was saying, yeah, I need to attend graduation. And you're like, sorry, what is he talking about? You know? <laughs> Because, like, if we have us mirrors, we'll be telling our children, now nah, this rate, you see, you see, you don't even go for graduation. You better get better. Do you want to go for graduation? I mean, us guys, by the way, we are just vicious. But anyway, so 
ah, Jerry Moturi, I don't have an accent. Stop it. You're harassing me. So, <laughs> anyway, um, yes. So, um, we prayed. We prayed over the young man and just really believed the Lord to be God and just to show himself in a powerful way. But that was hard. That was hard. That was very, very painful. So today we'll be praying over another, yet another little boy, an 11-year-old again, um, who the enemy has attacked again with a chronic conditions, or so he's calling it. And then um, thereafter, there's a pastor that I need to go and pray with. And he's a man of God who God sent him here to, 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 to bring revival. But he's been very discouraged. So I want to share with him the story of revival in Kenya. Because one of the things that happens is a lot of discouragement. A lot of discouragement. Especially, there's just a nature of revival that someone needs to understand. So I just want to go and encourage him. Um, go and see whether you can strengthen him in the Lord. So we'll be meeting him. And then later on, we will then travel to Delaware, where they're really, really waiting for us. We've got an amazing man called Pastor Nick, who has gotten us into the press. Did you guys see the headline? Yeah, we're making headlines. Revival is making headlines even before it manifests in the physical. And isn't that faith? You know, this is somebody I've never met. We've just known each other through an introduction. But he believes that the Lord indeed has sent revival. He believes in the ministry that God has put in my spirit and in my heart. And he believes that the revival will come. And I love that. I just love people who just have faith like that. So he got us onto headlines, um, newspaper headlines headlines so we'll be landing there and yeah seeing what the lord will do and of course there's a reminder from the lord that every state is different but the thing is god is a god of order so having secured um massachusetts and even my landing in massachusetts was very very prophetic and the lord just declares it's revisiting the foundations of america and um we we found ourselves really really praying over very deep things you know um but one of the things that i need to say that has come up a lot is the issue of black Americans. It's really coming up a lot. Eh? The Lord is really speaking to me about black Americans. And every time I'm praying for the black Americans, they call themselves African Americans. Um, but one of the things that the Lord is just really speaking to me about is the bitterness in their hearts. And I haven't even met any um, yet. Just meeting them on the streets and you can feel the anger. You can feel the bitterness. You can feel the lack of identity. You can feel that they are still stuck um, in slavery. Um, even though nobody is holding them sl into slavery. And um, I'm asking God at what point we are going to be ministering to that. But in the meantime, just praying for them and standing in the gap with them. The other thing that has stood out and I need to share, and if you not notice how we do our videos wherever we travel, whether locally or internationally, is that we share things with you so that you may know how to pray and how to stand in the gap. The other thing is how the Africans who have come to, to, to the state have forgotten who they are. They have forgotten that God sent them. They've forgotten that they're sent for such a time as this. They've forgotten that they are a contact um, for the Lord in, in um, whatever, in, in, in the states. And that's one of the things that needed to be restored. And um, the first night when the Lord talked about that, man, the hush over the room and people began to weep. And quite a number of people said, I covenanted with the Lord before coming to America. And God was very clear. And I can't even tell you at what point I forgot. But here's the thing about America that I also noticed that maybe if you want to send your child here or you want to send your sister here or you want to come here that you need to know. I've always wondered what happens to people when they come to America and why they backslide so easily, why they turn away from God, why they become lukewarm, why all of a sudden they don't really want to talk about God. And here's what happens when you come to America. When you get in, there is, first of all, remember there are, there are like strongholds and there are principalities of a, a nation. And one of the principalities and, and the things over, over the nation of America, honestly, is like a singing demon. Eh? Yes, I said singing, like lullaby. It says, go to sleep. It's okay. Everything will be fine. You don't need to pray as much as you're praying in Africa. Everything is all right. Just work a little harder and you have more dollars. There isn't much sickness. The hospital systems work, so you don't need God so much. Because, you know, in Africa, by the way, we pray because, man, anything can happen to you, isn't it? And you come here and everything works, everything is beautiful, everything looks wonderful. But they haven't seen flats, as in like high-rise buildings and all that at a CG ward. So this Kadimon just sings for you, go to sleep, it's okay, 
everything will be fine just sleep 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 you don't really need god you don't need god it's okay you're not in africa anymore you're not gonna die of disease everything works there's social 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 security da, 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 da. but really sincerely there is a demon over the land that just makes you relax as in sincerely i had to be reminded by the Holy Spirit that I came here on a mission and I came here for warfare. Because literally from the moment you step down like this, there's just a relaxation. There's a thing where, chill, it's all right, relax, you know, be posh, be cool, everything will be fine. And then, of course, they begin with the rush and they're working everywhere and everything. Christine, UK is a little different. Uh, UK is, UK is, um, UK is more... UK has a, a demon of depression. It actually has a demon of depression. UK is depression, outright depression. It just comes upon you and you feel sad and you become serious and everything. Here, it's more of fun. It's, by the way, there's a like warmth to it. Even when it's cold, you feel like you are lying in warm chocolate. Seriously, like a pool of warm chocolate. That's the feeling that everything is fine. You know, then you taste things and they're sweet and sugary and they're nice and, and everyone talks nicely and guys are calm and happy. And But the Americans are pretty much happy people. They're smile and they're friendly and everything so far from what I've found. And I, I know it's probably going to be different in every state I go to, but from this entry point, no wonder people turn away. And then I'm told that the churches, I haven't been to one yet, but the churches here have, I don't know, black churches, African churches, Kikuyu churches, Luo churches, Ghanaian churches, Nigerian churches. I don't know, they have white people churches, Latino churches, Indian churches, you know, so the churches are so racist and so divided. Um, and, and, and then... Um, from, from what I'm told, there is no real gospel going on. First of all, there's no prayer. So if there's no prayer, there's no power, okay? Because you can't have power without prayer. So there's no prayer. They don't believe much in prayer. They don't believe much in pressing in. They have a lot of programs. Churches are very social, so they are social places. But in spite of churches being social, nobody meddles in your business. So um, in that case, then you don't have fellowship. So they have good bible studies they they teach the word they you know and of course it's a word that is not rebuking you or making you feel bad and they're telling you you're a good person um they allow homosexuals in church and nobody's gonna say anything and you know and i'm not saying they shouldn't be allowed in church but they shouldn't be comfortable with in their sin in church they should be comfortable to come to the house of the lord because the lord accepts everybody and every sin is 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 sin regardless but nobody should sin comfortably in church whether it's adultery, whether it's fornication, whether it's that you're a liar, whether it's that you're, you're cheating on, on your taxes or whatever it is, but you shouldn't feel comfortable in church in sin. But people go to church, you know, they apparently, I'm told that even lesbians um, at the workplace actually evangelize and tell people, yeah, let's go to church. This is the church that I go to. And yeah, Apparently, they do that. So, yes, churches are also very commercialized, Christine, like you're saying. Very, very commercialized. Very focused on programs. You have to be on time so they don't let you, like, you know, keep preaching forever and everything. One of the problems I'm having, um, I got to, to learn, is the issue of... Um, that you also need to book your programs in advance. So you can't just wake up and say, I'll be there in two months and the Lord has told me to come and preach. So very few pastors will give you their, their pulpit. Then of course, they've had quite a bit of West African manenos where West Africans have come in and they've done the craziest of things. I was being told the other day about a pastor who came here and um, was telling people that if you've been hungry and lacking, you should just get a bag of rice and then you pour it at the pulpit and then pour it all the way home. I mean, seriously, guys. I'm like, what did you say? And the person says, yeah. The person says, yeah, I did it. But of course, nothing happened. But yeah, I did it. And you're like, sorry, you poured rice. Yes, I poured rice. From where? From the pulpit all the way to my house, I was pouring rice everywhere. Like, I'm sorry. And they're like, yeah, yeah. So we really, 
guys need to keep on praying for the restoration of divine order. So a lot of pastors are a little weary of, of, of people that talk about the Holy Spirit and especially African preachers because quite a number of them have come and done very, very weird things. Yeah, so it's, it's actually pretty worrying. Um, so... Um, also, so, someone is saying here that in South Africa, I feel there's a hatred spirit. Oh, yeah. Yeah. South Africa ha has a lot of barrenness and hatred, by the way, and a lot of anger. And people are still caught up in apartheid. Very, very similar to the black American situation. But yeah, South Africans, very, very angry, even in the church, very angry. And a lot of traditionalism as well in South Africa, from my experience. A lot of traditional worship and ancestral worship as well. So um, I think as I come back home, I will be trying to take time just to teach on how to um, win our nations for Jesus Christ and how to get back our nations from the Lord, uh, because that's what we are doing. Everywhere we are going, we're just declaring a redemption of, um, you know, the church of Jesus Christ. So we'll see how the Lord leads us on that. But yeah, heading out to Delaware. Then after that, we'll be in Georgia. Uh, from the first, I think, to the third. Then after after Georgia, I'll be heading out to Missouri, but I don't have a preaching engagement in Missouri, so um, unless the Lord opens up a way. And then after that, we'll go to Texas. We are believing God that we can get a hall in Texas where we can just minister and encourage people. And then... Um, uh, after that, we'll end up in Maryland. We want to go and support Sitam there as well and just um, attend the conference there. So if you're going to be there, we'll see you there. Uh, don't have a preaching engagement at the moment. Yes, but um, yeah. Yes, Vanessa, I did promise to teach on the courtrooms of heaven, but time ran out. So just believing God, just believing God for a breakthrough that um, we'll be able to, yeah, to do that. So day by day, day by day, we'll teach, we'll teach on that. It's pretty, pretty simple. The courtrooms of heaven are pretty, pretty simple. Yeah. Georgia reminds me of slavery. Okay. Someone says Georgia reminds me of slavery. Georgia, actually the main stronghold from what I've been told, though, I will, I will, I will check it out is uh, there's a lot of discouragement um, and a lot of religiosity and a lot of, um, uh, Georgia has a lot of drug abuse and at the moment one of the things I'm being told is that a lot of Kenyans are dying in Georgia right now like in the last one week four Kenyans have died just in um, this church where we'll be ministering so it's really really serious something crazy is going on there but all these things stem by the way from not taking our positions that you know come to America and you um, relinquish what God sent you in to do so you find that the land is actually vomiting you, not giving you your papers and everything because you've forgotten your priorities. Because if the Lord sends you, the Bible says, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And so if you come in the name of the Lord, even your papers will be sorted out because you are walking in obedience to God. But when you leave things of God, then the land will fight you and vomit you. Yeah. No, in East Salon, I'm all going to North Carolina because um, I, I have no contact there. So for now, I'll not be going to North Carolina. So we'll continue to believe the Lord um, to open the way for different places. And I do not have any revelation whatsoever about North Carolina. I don't like to speak when I don't know anything because I speak as led by the Lord. So um, we'll keep sharing. I believe that Within the next three years, we'll be able to have done every state in America. That's 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 what I'm I'm feeling led to try and do. At least the next three to five years, we'll have finished all the states in America, and so we'll be making quite a number of trips here and just believing God for contacts to open and for places to open. Um, thank you so much for the believers that have continued to open their doors to us. I mean, I'm staying in a. A uh, lady who was an ex, uh, she's a Cameroonian American. Um, she just opened her home to me, and of course connected by several Kenyans, and you know in Maryland as well. I'm being hosted. Actually, everywhere I'm going, I'm being hosted by Kenyans. So far, I I, I don't have someone who's, although I did have an American in Tennessee offering her home, but we didn't have a place to preach. So I don't want to go to places if there's no place to preach, other than at the moment just the the places that the Lord has said really. Yeah, so that's where we are at. Uh, so far, extremely successful. Continue to press in, continue to pray. Let me tell you, there was every reason um, to feel that we needed um, prayer support. Uh, because let me tell you guys, the demons here, yes, they don't wear shorts. Eh? Yeah, they, 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 they wear pants and suits. 
and uh, they're not joking and the intimidation is real but then greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world so we bless the lord even as we get ready to travel so allow me to go and rest and sleep a little bit at least a few more hours before we take off but we've been in crazy prayer we've been in heavy intercession and just pressing in we've actually i only slept the first night and then from there uh we just began to have um, night vigils and call on the name of the lord god bless you guys so much um Wangeshi, I'm coming to UK just as soon as I have a church to minister in, honey. Yeah, so I could I could do November, and I do have the UK visa, so I can come. Uh, actually, I can just board a flight anytime. I just need that either a hall that we can use, you know, so long as we have some worshippers and everything, we will do it. But it would be nice if we had a church because I like handing over people to a church. So if that can be organized, I will be in the UK. It's one of the, the places that the Lord has put very heavily on my heart. Yeah. Frida says, may the covenant making God and a covenant keeping God go before you. Absolutely, Frida. By the way, let me tell you the thing we have stood on is that God is a covenant God. And so we've been remembering that even when the Mayflower uh, landed here in uh, Massachusetts, Boston, Massachusetts, one of the things was a covenant that they had made with God. And while we were not party to that covenant, the Holy Spirit was and is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. So we will, um, you know, deal with that. We will we will we, we have been able sorry we have been able to revisit those those covenants and just declare lord god the foundations of america and just declaring you know um that uh just like elijah on mount carmel we rebuild the altar of the living god even after challenging um the baal priests and challenging the asherah priests and then declare that the altar of the living god is secure so that's exactly what we've been doing it's been very very powerful it's been an axe axe uh, sorry a, a first kings 18 affair uh really and just remembering that god is a covenant god so we've stood a lot on that and we will continue to stand a lot on that. Amen. Okay, I see Alice Bright saying that she can organize a hall in the UK. So if Alice and Wangeshi can hook up, guys, um, why not? And, you know, I, I'm going to repeat what I said. My friend here, B, um, in, in the States, just became a ministry partner and began to just send her support and her son started to send support and everything and that's how we started and we started saying it would be wonderful if we could get together and that's how we got together and you know when I told her I'm coming she was really really overwhelmed and felt that she couldn't do it she couldn't host she couldn't organize anything but the Lord used this Cameroonian lady as a connection who was bold and courageous and the women gathered together and said no we are doing this and that's how the doors were opened so really it's just to say here I am Lord and and the Lord will get it done. So we'll believe the Lord. So Alice, just get in touch with Wangeshi. She's a dear friend of mine from high school days. Just connect, um, the two of you connect, and let's see what the Lord will do. I mean, I believe it's possible. So I'll be going to, um, I'll be heading out to, oh gosh, I'm forgetting the name. I'll be heading out towards The Hague um, in September. So I could combine that. You know, I could do a stopover either going or a stopover coming back and we can we can deal with the drama. Because the Lord really spoke about going to Europe and dealing with the demons in Europe um, as I'm coming in September. And uh, the Lord has really been giving me revelation about Europe. And um, UK is very, very, very critical if you're going to deal with Europe. So even as we are dealing with the Netherlands, that's the country, even as we are dealing with the Netherlands and the strongholds in the Netherlands, we it would be very, very important to be able to do um, uh, England because at least I thank God I also have... Um, I also have the connections. Uh, I have what, the visa. I thank God I have the visa. So that's not also going to be drama. Amen. God bless you guys. Let's continue to submit ourselves to the Lord. Sometimes we want to pray. We want to be intercessors. We want God to do something, and we, but we don't know what. So that's the thing. We, we come to you and help you and, and guide you on, on what to do. Um, looking at Australia as well, um, the, the, the lady there, you know, just took on something and she didn't, she didn't even feel that she, she could, but the Lord really, really did great things for Australia when we were there the other day. Very, very powerful, and revival was flagged off. So let's just believe the Lord that if the Lord connects us to you, then the Lord can use you, okay? So a lot of times we expect God to use qualified people, hire people, and all that. And us guys are simple, by the way. You know, one of the things I tell people is, I'm so simple. 
that even if you lay for me a mattress on the floor, I can't sleep on the couch because, of course, I'll be stiff and it will be hard because it's a bit difficult for my body and everything. But I'll lie down on a mattress on the floor. I have no problem, yeah? Just spread a mattress on the floor. We will sleep, okay? And then, of course, I don't eat much because a lot of times I'm fasting and praying. So just, you know, don't think that you need to do something elaborate, yeah? I take buses. I have no problem taking buses. You've seen me on picky pickies. So for me, so long as the gospel is preached, that is really what matters. Matters and we have a shelter over our heads that is what matters the rest the Lord will do so let's believe the Lord and of course we have online support here and uh, the church in back home in Sozo and people give to the missions and somehow the Lord also just provides he makes a way um, so that you'll not struggle with debt and you'll not struggle with you know payments and all that so don't be afraid of that just let the Lord use you let the Lord use you let the Lord do whatever it is whether you have a one-room place or whatever it is by the way I share beds I mean depending on who it is I share beds as well like in Singapore Pastor Carol and I were sleeping in the same bed you know so I I don't believe in 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 being superfluous if there's such a word yeah so the gospel just needs to be preached okay sawa sawa barikiweni sana god bless you don't get intimidated let's preach the gospel and offer yourself and just say lord i'll be a contact for my nation where you have sent me lord i might not know what to do but lord god help me to know what to do okay and let's do this for jesus so we bless the lord let's just take a moment and pray together heavenly father we want to say thank you for what you've done in massachusetts oh lord jehovah god we stand in awe of you oh lord jehovah god indeed lord jehovah god sometimes when you send us we feel like we're on a boat without a paddle oh lord jehovah god but you are our paddle king of glory you're the one that provides us strength you're the one that shows us what to do oh lord jehovah god when you tell us to just go lord jehovah god and we obey you you meet us there oh god so thank you father even as i testify that we have met you here we've seen your glory we've seen your goodness we've seen your mercy father god you have raised up oh god prayer warriors women oh lord jehovah god who are ready to minister to you and minister to your heart oh lord jehovah god and they represent uh, generations of power they represent generations of your glory and your goodness lord and and great things shall come out of this state in the name of Jesus Christ, oh God. Father God, thank you for every prayer warrior that continues to pray with us and even just checking in uh, online is about really making contact and saying, how do we pray? How do we stand? Thank you for every person that has given, oh God, that so far, Lord Jehovah God, we're not struggling under the burden of debt, oh God, which is just a miracle, oh Lord Jehovah God, for this mission has not been cheap. Father, we thank you for your kindness. Thank you also for opening for our way for us to have a social session, oh God, in July, in the name of Jesus Christ. We know that you'll also make away for us oh god in terms of provision for there is nothing that is difficult for you oh god we give you the rest of the mission as we head out to delaware thank you for pastor nico obiero oh lord jehovah god dr pastor nico obiero in the name of jesus christ you're going to do great things oh god even as we head out to georgia you'll do great things as well oh god and our apostle um apostle francis oh lord jehovah god thank you for their intercessors thank you for every person lord jehovah king of glory and thank you so much father for our online ministry as well as our, as our back home ministry that back Backs us up, oh God. Thank you, Father. It's wonderful to get online and see so many of our intercessory team members just checking in, oh Lord Jehovah God, because we know that they were, they were praying, even yesterday, Lord God, during Powerhouse, they were praying and pressing in, Father God, I can feel the support of your children. So Lord God, for every person who's given one way or another, oh Lord Jehovah God, into this mission, remember them and do great and mighty things for them, oh God, for you are a covenant keeping God and you are faithful. And when people show up for you, Lord God, you remember them too. We bless you and we thank you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. All right, guys. So thank you for watching. Um, please share the video so that it can also just um, let people know that God is moving and God is doing something and really that there's activity around the world and the Lord, Lord's glory is going on and really that, that the kingdom of God is, is, is at hand. Um, and it's a new day and the Lord is doing something special. So God bless you guys richly. Thank you for watching. Thank you for standing with us. Thank you so much for praying. Keep praying, okay? We're depending on those prayers. Keep praying. If you're able to give, you can give. Uh, we're still accessing um, giving through the ministry line, the 0799 number, 0799190010. You can give into this ministry. It's a way of sowing. And by the way, whether it's two shillings, it is still sowing into the U.S. mission and what the Lord does in this place. If you're giving out of, you know, um, uh, a fullness place, then the Lord will remember you as well. But above all, pray, 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 pray. Even if you cannot give, pray.
pray and stand in the gap. And let's believe the Lord to secure America for the glory of Jehovah. God bless you guys. And may the Lord minister to your every need according to his riches in glory. Um, I leave you with Deuteronomy 28 verse 12. Please go and read it. That the Lord has opened for us a walk-in closet. Okay? So whatever you need, the Lord has opened up a walk-in closet for you. Remember, God's giving is not just financial. There's so much more. Abundance of health, abundance of sanity, you know, joy. Um, you know, whatever it is that you need, the Lord takes that form as Jehovah Jireh. God bless you so much. Thank you for watching with lots of love from Massachusetts where the glory of God is falling and we are seeing the goodness of the Lord in this land of the living and we are waiting to also see the headlines change. Hallelujah. Barikiwe ni kabisa. Mpaka mushangai. Amen.